Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. This week, Dan and Lloyd are going to be talking about a book that influenced the growth of the business in a very big way. They're going to be reading some excerpts from Agency Nomics by Spencer Gallagher and Peter Hall. I know what a book's good when I or we send each other photos and put it in our WhatsApp group of things that we've read like this is really powerful and these are those things. Now, those are strong words. But to see just how much this book has changed things, we need to go back to the dark ages, long before Agency Nomics. I remember I was on holiday in mm. Spain and I got a phone call from you saying, um, Dan, you know, like our spreadsheets and stuff, we've thought we've got like 20 grand in the business. Mm. Um, and I was like, yeah. And you went, well, no one's paying us and we've got minus 30 grand. Yeah. Today we're going to hear all about EBITDA, whatever that is, as well as the power of underpromising and over-delivering. We'll even learn a thing or two about the human body. Yeah. I'm just, uh, for listeners and not viewers... I'm flapping around trying to find the next page. <laughs> um, I thought the viewers would know that, but the listeners wouldn't have. Uh, Probably right, because their ears can't see. Right, let's dive in. Reading glasses at the ready. This is episode 47 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. I think this book has provided the most value and growth for our agency out of any book, or almost anything, ever. That is a big statement. What, even more than me, as a person? Yeah. Oh! oh. Well, no, not quite more than you, but it genuinely has. Mm. And I think that's why we want to do a podcast episode on it, because we're going to read through some of the bits that we've got the most Mm. value from, and... um, I can also tell that you're a marketer because you've called it this book so that at the moment people are clinging on. Oh, that, that was like, completely by what, What's the book going to be? Oh, Well, yeah. I mean, it's in the title of the podcast. So. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. That we haven't yeah. written yet, but it will be. Yeah. I, I do agree. I think it's been massively important for our business. And I spoke to Spencer. So Agency Nomics is written by Spencer Gallagher and Peter Hool. Hool. Did that sound strange? Hool. No. No. Um, and spoke to Spencer and he said he's more than happy for us to read some mm. excerpts. So if you haven't read the book, um, you'll be hearing some short bits. Um, and obviously, if you like it, go and help those guys out and yeah. buy the book because they've massively helped our business. I also think it's important to say this isn't just a book for people who have an agency. Mm. It's, it's, it is called Agency Nomics and it's focused around growing an agency, but all of the, most of mm. the tips can be applicable to any business or if you're in marketing. Yeah, I was going to say that. I reckon about 75% of the book is just, if you have a business, it will be good advice for you. Yeah. And then there's some more niche stuff that's like, if you're an agency. Yeah. But, yeah. So... So... Shall we begin? Gather, yeah. <laughs> gather around, children. Um, so... I'm going to... Uh, also, just one more. The sections we've got are the bits... I know what a book's good when I... Or we send each other photos and put it in our WhatsApp group of things yeah. that we've read, like, this is really powerful, and these are those things. Yeah. Um, so, firstly, uh, starting with one that sounds boring... Okay. <laughs> ...but very useful. Yeah. And it's not boring, Spencer and Peter, obviously. Um Cash flow forecast. <laughs> oh, God. This is where everyone drops off on the podcast. <laughs> um, it does get better than this. Uh, yeah, this, this has made us loads of money, guys. So even if you think it's boring, yeah. if you want more money, you know. Incredibly important, yet used by few businesses. A cash flow forecast looks at the amount of money your company is in possession of at any one time and how that maps out in the short to medium term. The profit and loss forecast won't do this, as there is a distinct difference between profit and loss and cash surpluses and deficits. Um, See, I reckon a lot of the business owners are listening thinking, oh yeah, of course we do that, but... We never did, did we? Yeah, we... <laughs> tell ca- the story, cash actually. Cash forecast. So, so I'll tell you where we are now, thanks to Agency Nomics and, and some of our input. We, we do have our own brains as well. But this is what actually made us start doing it. Now, for the next six months, we have an estimated number that is going to be in the business bank account from all the money coming in for great work we're doing all the money going out for our staff and rent and all the costs of buying weird stuff that we do mm. buy for video shoots um and so obviously to make business decisions that's great we can go can we hire another person this month well yeah we've got the cash in the bank and we're not going to fail as a business why are you smir- smirking because i'm remembering of the backstory of why this 
I remember I was on holiday in mm. Spain and I got a phone call from you saying, um, Dan, you know, like our spreadsheets and stuff, we've thought we've got like 20 grand in the business. Mm. Um, and I was like, yeah. And you went, well, no one's paying us and we've got minus 30 grand. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like... Yeah, we looking at all the profit and loss accounts. Like, oh, business is making a profit. Mm. This is good. Things are going well. And like Dan said, um, this we weren't forecasting ago. like when the money was coming in. So it was at some point from clients, <laughs> and we were spending loads on like projects that had just started. Mm. And yeah, it was that thing of why is everywhere we look, it's saying we're making these profits, but we're getting more and more in debt. <laughs> yeah. Why is that happening? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and now it doesn't happen. Because of that, and we yeah. can, and I know it's so it's the stressful thing as a business owner of going, oh, I'm in a massive overdraft, or I've, you know, mm. I'm in debt and stuff. But I, it wasn't as much that for us because we had confidence in the business that mm. that cash would increase. But it's actually been able to make decisions that are faced the long term. Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, for listeners and not viewers. I'm flapping around trying to find the next page. <laughs> um, I thought the viewers would know that, but the listeners wouldn't have. have Probably right because their ears can't that. see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that was my logic. <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to show how uh, my lack of knowledge before reading this book and yeah. say I had never heard of an EBITDA before reading this. Oh, you I don't think that? many people would have. Oh, really? I, just, I don't think so. No. Okay. So let's just say it again. EBITDA. So, listeners, have you heard of that? I bet most of you haven't. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so, I'll read the section and then we can discuss it. Yeah. So, uh, lastly, to conclude on agency finances, it is essential to understand how your company is valued. This gives you a scorecard to monitor how well your asset is growing in value and bring some sanity to the chaos of everyday agency life. The value of your company is usually based on a multiple of EBITDA, i.e. your earnings before interest... Before <laughs> I was waiting for the first time until I mucked up something. Um, audible, if you're listening. You know where I am. Uh, your earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortisation. I'm going to stop it there and then talk about stuff. So, yeah. there's lots of good stuff on EBITDA. But um, lots of people are building their business to potentially sell... Mm. Or they or they just want something when they're building their business to be like, what's my business worth? Am yeah. I is it increasing in value? So am I doing good the right stuff? Thing. And um, especially if people are trying to build a scalable business to sell at some point, rather than a lifestyle business of you know you you enjoy the work you do and you, you want are the to, business you are the business and you want to continue it forever. Mm. And when you step away, the business will die. Oh, well, that sounds very you know that's absolutely <laughs> fine, um, but. It, yeah, if you're building a business to sell, then this figure that they show you how to work out... Yeah, it literally gives you a breakdown in the book of how to figure out what your agency or what your business is worth, which... Mm. And then again, like like we were saying about, oh, why is it useful long-term for your business or whatever? You can do that calculation quarterly, every six months, every year, and be like, right, I've been working hard all this year. Is the, has the work I've, I've done or my team has done actually increased the value of the business? Mm. And it's quite a nice thing to say, all that hard work we've been doing mm. is doing the job and we're growing. And if it hasn't, then yeah. you need to change there something. there are <laughs> things, you know, without working this kind of thing out. So say, you know, during the pandemic, we've gone from four, a team of four to a team of 10. And it's like, so that looks like we have grown our business. There's lots of businesses uh, that fall into the trap, I think, of, thinking we've grown as in look at the people here but that doesn't yep. necessarily increase the value of your business it's like look we've said about this before if we grow now from 10 to 30 people but we're earning the same profit we've got all the that's ridiculous because we've got all the extra stress that comes with having an extra 20 people to manage but the profit isn't growing so yeah 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 a bit duh <laughs> um right now, this next section is something that um, our dad actually taught us back in the day as our kind of business mentor, um, but it goes into this a bit more. So, under promise, over deliver. Love this one. In our experience, most agencies over service their clients, but there's a fine line between over servicing your clients at an acceptable, acceptable amount or a moderate to excessive amount. An acceptable amount would be up to 15%, a moderate. <laughs> 
A moderate to excessive amount would be over 15 to 20%, and an excessive amount would be over 20%. If you lose one client that's less than 15% of your income, then in most cases, this will be less than or equal to the agency's annual profits. This would mean for a short period of time, the agency would be at a break-even point, and with that, focus can bounce back quickly. Any client losses over 15% could mean having to lose staff in the short term, and it goes on to lots of brilliant mm. stuff. Um so I guess what what we always spoke about with under promise over deliver was the side of things and that dad mm. sort of showed us of make sure if you over promise and under deliver your customers will constantly be, be disappointed mm. so you're not going to get people coming back spending more money so you can grow your business do what you want to do if you're under promising and then you're over delivering that gives yeah. you the opportunity to exceed expectations and people get really excited about it I think from a from a sales perspective, for me, I've in the past, look, you know, analysing myself, I've over promised because when you're trying to sell something, mm. you want to put it in its best light possible. But I've learned in the past that, you know, when we were starting out, I was maybe overselling stuff and over promising, mm. and then it was more difficult to deliver. So it's trying to get that that balance of. Mm. Um, it's a bit like when you met your your fiance and you told her you were good in the bedroom, isn't it? Like when you over promise like that and then you want to deliver. Is it? Yeah. Um, moving on. Um, <laughs> You're being really inappropriate today. Oh, well, sorry. Was that inappropriate? Sorry, listeners. Um, I apologise. Um, what um, Spencer and Peter were saying in in that excerpt there was the other side of it of like, yes, you want to over deliver, but you've got to be careful how much you over deliver because you because then it doesn't become sustainable. Risk. If you're yeah. pricing out a project or a, a new customer. And then you over deliver by twenty five percent, and you know, and your profit on that project's twenty percent. Then you're losing yeah. money doing all that work. And if Lloyd was just running the business, then we would be over delivering and not earning any profit because he'd just give everything away yes. for, to charity. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, right now, moving on to the next section where I'll be appropriate throughout. <laughs> um, day rates. <laughs> oh, exciting stuff. <laughs> this, you, this I, is actually really... I will admit there's not as much entertainment in this episode, but it's going to be really valuable for yeah. people growing businesses, okay? All yeah. right? All right, anchors. So if you're bored, you should be, all right? <laughs> so that still means it's good. Um, <laughs> Keep reassuring yourself. Having the wrong, in brackets, on the low side day rate will affect profitability. No matter how well you sell project... You sell product... <laughs> You sell, project manage, or deliver your services. Without the correct day rate, you will be fighting a losing battle. We touched on setting your day rates a little earlier in the finance section of the book, mainly getting you to focus on a competitive market rate. However, we can now expand on this in more detail. There are typically three ways to approach day rates. The first way is as follows. Follows. (laughs) Add up your total overhead. Were you waving at me, Dan? No, I was itching my eye. Oh, cool. (laughs) Trying to keep it stay awake. Uh, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> then work out the number of days you have available to sell through your team let's say you have 1400 days available to sell then it's overhead divided by capacity uh is your break even day rate right i'm gonna stop reading the details <laughs> yeah. uh, i've realized that's not uh not great but this section really for me especially when, when we're building a team made me realize how important the amount we charge for our team's time is mm. And at first, it kind of appears like, wow, we're... Uh, when I first was looking at this, I thought, cool, that's a big number to f- for our team's time. Mm. That seems quite a lot. And then I realized, obviously, our team are brilliant and we're brilliant, yeah. so it's worthwhile. But also, to cover all of the costs of running the business, in addition to, to like that, that yeah. to have a successful business. Mm. Um, and if you get it wrong... You know, there's even been projects, I'll admit, that I've made mistakes. So there's projects in the past where we've priced it out at a specific day rate and things. And at the end of it, I thought that was a really interesting, creative thing to work on. But but we've lost money. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't profitable because we didn't charge enough for our team's time. And Mm. our team are brilliant, so we need to. Mm. Um, So yeah, that was was an important part for, for me. How do people come up with what to charge? Because I think most businesses, like cleaners, would be thinking, oh, most cleaners charge 30 quid an hour, 20 mm. quid an hour. We'll just charge that. But if you're not working out, how many staff do you have? Yeah. What are all the overheads you've got? 
And I think that's why this book is so good for any business. Because like, like they said earlier in the book, they say about how to make it so it's kind of a good market rate. So you'll be able to win business and you're not crazily too expensive and you're not screwing yourself over by paying mm. not enough. But in that section, it goes through different calculations you can use uh, for something that actually makes sense for your business. And I think that's so useful for, to people because that's one of those things in lots of lines of work. It's like, oh, someone goes, oh, can you give us a quote? And in reality, you business owners out there are thinking, well, I don't know. What should, <laughs> yeah. I, what should I charge for this? Yeah. And I think to have like yeah. a, an exact calculation is I think that's really something helpful. else I really like about this book. Throughout, there's tons of calculations for stuff. Mm. It's not one of those books... Like I've, I've read a few books recently that are really good and motivating. I think, oh, that's interesting. This mm. is like, here's the exact equation to work out this element of your business. And we've actually taken that mm. and then used the equations and the templates to do i agree and i think that's what sets this book apart is spencer and peter have been very generous with the value that they've the kind of stuff they've learned over the years there is very rare that you have books that go into this like a how-to guide of we're literally going to tell you step by step mm. exactly how to do things and it's still interesting to read because yeah. i find some how-to books are just informative mm. and boring mm. but that they tell stories as well in this which yeah. makes it more interesting yeah we're reading some of the more like value adding yeah. assets which <laughs> probably undersells the book guys yeah. but like yeah. like dan said there's stories about when spencer and peter have been growing agencies mm. and helping agencies around the world mm. um which makes it quite entertaining as Definitely. well as this like really value adding stuff what we got next lloyd what? so now something that's very appropriate for us as business partners so if you've got a co-founder or if you're working alongside someone this i think will be useful um, where possible, make sure one of you is managing and focusing on the external part of the business and one of you is managing and focusing on the internal part of the business. That way you have at least one of you externally focused on sales and marketing and at least one of you internally focused on the operational and delivery part of the agency. I remember taking a photo of this and instantly sending it to you and thinking mm. re after we properly defined our roles mm. and saying this makes me so yeah. confident that what we're doing is right. <laughs> and again, so simple when you just read that short paragraph. It's like, of course yeah, yeah, of course, that makes complete sense. But until you read and, and read more into how to do that, it's... Because we mentioned before, when we started out, we were just doing bits of everything, weren't we? Yep. And then some things didn't get done because I thought you were doing it, vice versa. Mm -hmm. But now, well, now we've had it done for a while, but we've got properly mm -hmm. defined roles um, within the business so we know who's doing what, who's responsible for what. And we've spoken about it before in the podcast, but actually... Um, trying to make sure within the business you have people whose skills suit these things so luckily me and Dan found it out over time mm. but Dan was much better at the sales and mm. marketing and the outward fo focusing yeah. stuff and I was much better on the yeah. inward focusing like how can our mm. business work and this book covers both sides actually yeah. which is great we want to get we try to avoid getting you in front of people because your face kind of scares them yes my face <laughs> my things I say everything really yeah um, yeah. So this is actually the, the final bit of uh, value from this book that we're going to read today. Yep. But uh, just so you know, it could, we could have had thousands of different things from this <laughs> book. But um, this one I think is really important. So take the time to talk to individuals and understand what they would like from both their job and their life outside of work and review this as often as possible. If you align your organization with the goals of the individuals, then your people will become come invested in your organization. For a small agency, this may, may take the form of an informal one-to-one -one meeting. And for larger businesses, this may be via more formal appraisals. Either way, it's important to get this done. So, uh, I really the way like that. I describe this is actually give a shit about people. Yeah. Um, so in our interviews and in our appraisals, we ask the team what they, if they have any goals, uh, in their career later on even outside of their business or inside of our business mm. um, and what they are trying to achieve and we we kind of try and set out that we want to support them doing that mm. um, and then take actions to do that if they have uh, a dream or a goal that they want to achieve um, some people are much more happy kind of like I'm doing what I'm doing at the moment everything's I'm fine. good and it's fine so we don't have those plans in place but some people are kind of like I want to get here I want to do mm. this it might be I want to be directing feature films uh, in 15 years' time, mm. and I've got a long way to go. And then it's like, okay, well, what, what can, can we you do learn to... within this business and what can we help you do yeah. what will be valuable to our business and for you? And I just think it's it makes sense. It makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. To actually make an environment where we're 
supporting people mm. and and it's not it's not again it's not just me you take the piss out of me and our business of just being like oh help everyone help the world and the business is going to fail because we give away everything <laughs> yeah um it's more like that's going to be valuable valuable for our business we're going to be able to attract and keep the best people we could have in this business mm. if we're supporting them and we're not like you know if someone's going to say oh in five years time i'd like to be doing this other thing if we're a business that goes well, Get out. you're going to leave. So I'm just going to be a dick to you all the time <laughs> yeah. and make sure you have a terrible time. Yeah. Um, that's just not good for anyone. No. Um, whereas the business could get five years of brilliant value. The employee could yeah. get five years of brilliant value. And I think that's what people forget as well. Because you, you're still getting value, hopefully both ways, when someone's here, even if they've got plans to you know, travel the world yeah. in five years or something. You're still both hmm. contributing Let's to the value honest. of... When you look at people's careers these days, it's much rarer that someone starts in a job when they're 21 and they're there until they're 65. Yeah. Um, so it'd be unreasonable to think that everyone is going to stick within mm. the business for decades. But if they're enjoying themselves while they're here and providing value, I think we've done our job. Yeah. So I think that's really, really important. And that's more of the like, that's one of the more fluffy bits that isn't like, here's this calculation. Yeah. But do exactly that. But I think it's Just so important. Just give a shit about people. Yeah. And I would say, guys, if you're going to read this book, um, do what Dan and I did. So we, or Dan mainly did this, just taking pictures of bits that are really important and save them somewhere. Because yeah. um, when you read a book, when there's so much value in a mm. book, you can read a load of stuff and you forget half of it. But that's Some people really like good. highlighting and stuff. I'm, mm. I'm not into that, but I do like the... Not into highlighting. Well, no, because I don't know. It's just annoying when you try. I read in bed mainly, and it's just annoying. Don't have a highlighter next to your bed. No. Uh, okay. Just just highlighting in his hair. He likes. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay, Dan. But there's loads more in the book, isn't there? That, yeah. I mean, you've just given a flavour. There's yeah. Just thought I'd give you a bit of a taster. We're we're actually meeting Spence and Peter for the first time in person in the next couple of days, mm. and uh we've because so we've been thinking about the book a lot more and stuff and thought that would be something really useful for a lot of uh listeners potentially yeah um so it's on audible as well i listened to the book the first time do they read it i can't remember uh, no it's i believe it's someone related to them or their business that reads it it's a lady's voice that's very nice to listen to nice voice that does nice make voice. a difference yeah. if an audible yeah. it's quite a relaxing voice actually mm. which is good when there's some detail in there yeah not to get to reading equations yeah um but yeah that's great cool so business anchors we hope that's provided you some value and um we will be talking what we talking about next week then we're talking about how to spot agency catfish marketing agency catfishes so you can avoid being scammed is it catfish or fishes cat uh oh catfish yeah did i say fishes yeah yes the plural of fish is fish i believe uh, so that's another bit of value for you. Bonus at the end there, <laughs> listeners. Um, if you want us to talk about any more plurals. Uh, no, all plurals? Is plurals the plural of plurals? Plurals? <laughs> oh, shut up. Okay, see you next week, guys. Bye.